Jane, Mary at Espresso Press Design. Thank you for visiting today, October 8th, 2024. Today we're going to do some more wax paper. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Antiquing, gold, hologram. I'm not sure yet, but it's something I tried to do a long time ago and then revisited, came up with a new method and it finally worked. But first, the usual, and I'm going to stay standing up here a minute so that I can hopefully get this to show up on camera so you'll understand it. But first, um, the usual uh, show and tell, the new products, and the light is not doing this justice because it's much more vibrant and warmer, and my lights are bleaching it out a little bit as usual. Autumn apples, and I actually cut one of these up, and I'm going to be trying this technique on this today. So there's that. And thank yous to Jennifer, Ingrid, Carice, Sandy, Carly, Terry, Martha, Lucy, Colleen, Lucretia, Laser, Debbie. And Lucretia, thank you so much. You must be one productive crafter. <laughs> Bought 22 of my products in one week. It blew my mind. But thank you so much. I appreciate it. And for those in the upcoming Milton store, another hurricane. I honestly can't believe this might be happening again so soon. I hope you're evacuating. And uh, thoughts and prayers with you today and tomorrow. So, here's the technique, and I'm going to try to get this to show up, but your image kind of disappears and reappears on the surface. It's gold, but underneath is your image, and the surface gold literally looks like it's floating so there's actual real dimension in this and it's just very hard to show up when I am down here and this far away but you'll see it better I have two styles here for you and several several metallics. Here's another one where you can have the gold on top but the image shows up when you tilt it. So it's it's very it looks very antique and it looks like uh, reverse decoupage and I did um, first I began with florals then I moved on to fruit then I did some Christmas and some more florals okay um, this is a favorite and I hope you can see that it's like veining the way I did the uh, wax paper makes it show up and I have another favorite one here this one there we go you can see the veining of the gold on top and the floral below. 
So where am I? I'm at six already. So I better sit down and get started here. So I'm not going to go over the gluing. Glued my images onto packaging. Now I don't have any back packaging. So you'll need some packaging if you want to do them this way. I have a full set of metallic paints and I'm going to use my first one which is uh, Deco Art Metallic Glorious Gold and I'm going to use Extreme Glitter but I'm going to go through here and show you I used copper I used um, metallic silver I used bronze I, I like the bronze I like the bronze in the gold and I like the uh, extreme glitter gold so those were three favorites so I'm going to show you here that I'll show you the Christmas ones and then I'm going to show you the types of images that work best okay this one was a gold glorious gold Here's a bronze, and I'm sure the bronze is not going to show up as well as the gold, but it is actually shiny there, but I like the bronze. Here's the copper. Surprisingly, I didn't like the copper as much. Um, and plus I made a boo-boo. That upper corner there on the right, I got too much of a glob of paint. So that's the copper. Um, this is gold. The, the image didn't turn out as well as I had hoped. I'm going to show you that too. This is gold. And hopefully I'm going to show you how to do that edge. I'm trying to get that edge to show up glittery because that's what it is. But it's not showing up very well, but it's very glittery. And here is the one that has the gold brush completely on top but the image still <laughs> shows up when you tilt it. And then I have this very, the first time I bought silver paint, <coughs> I think it's a defective bottle because it's so liquid. And then I thought I would try it to do that technique and uh, it worked pretty well. So that's what I'll be using my silver for. That defective bottle. Where is it here? I think that's the normal one. Here's the one that's... You can hear how liquid that is. So it's extremely translucent. And then here I'm going to show you is the glitter, the glittery one with my metallic pen on the outside. And that's not showing up just doing that justice at all. It, the, gl the extreme glitter actually looks like um, gold leaf. That's how shiny it is. So here is the technique 
and there is another one where I did aged and that is combining it with ink instant aging hopefully that is glitter extreme glitter and ink and it, again the camera is not picking this up the way it really is <laughs> so you're just going to have to experiment and try it yourself so I'm going to show you um, the types of images that are going to work best here and that is images that have some contrast now this one this is probably going to get tossed even though it shows up a little better uh, it's a yellow whitish yellow flower not enough contrast this is a good one because there's enough contrast in the image that you can clearly see both the image and the glitter there's another good one the fruit is good because there's enough contrast there okay so those are the types of images you're going to want and I'm going to flip through here and show you some that would be appropriate and that should work right off the bat of course I have the fruit I think this is naturalist fruit um, these types of images naturalist leaves and bear naturalist I forget the name of this naturalist leaves and flowers maybe uh, vintage botanique that would work I've done a couple of those there's another one antique garden like this contrasting that would work that would work that would work there's another one of that that would work wildflowers too that would work um, like this area this area I'm not sure but this area this area that would work this would work it's upside down something like this uh, there's more botanique vintage botanique that would work that bird would be beautiful I would shrink that down of course something like that or like that um, the butterflies this area these would probably work the pansies I did those those would work those would work and probably this area in delicate florals and these would work so you just have to remember to get enough contrast so that things don't disappear on you okay another thing um, I bought that wax paper at Dollar Tree 
it it does not work <laughs> for any of these wax paper laminating. It was terrible. Let me show you what it did. It's too white. It doesn't get translucent. And those, that image definitely worked. And this one should have worked. But because I was using that wax paper, it did not work very well because it's too white. So stick with the Reynolds Cut Right. Reynolds Cut Right. And let me show you here the difference. There's Cut Right. There's Dollar Tree. So this is this will be great for glassine bags or something. Today I'm going to be using it for a palette, but stick with something like that. Okay, and I have a white background here so you can see. So you'll need your paints, your images. some wax paper, some glue, scissors, and today I'm going to be using a paper brush for your benefit because the first time I did this I did use my fingers and uh, by the end of the session I look like the Tin Man. And it took forever to get paint off my hands. So I'm going to be using a paper brush. I forgot to bring it down. I was using one of those silicone mask pliers from the Dollar Tree. That also worked. But <clears throat> paper brush. And I just use old business cards. And these are actually pretty stiff. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I think that's it. So first I'm going to do one of the flower ones. So I just, and I'm not going to repeat all this of how to laminate with wax paper. That's in another video. You can use glue or glue stick. Whichever is best for you. You don't have to use a Sizzix, but I am going to be pressing and die cutting mine on the Sizzix because I want the die cut shape. And uh, I'm using mine for tags. I have all my Christmas tags made already. <clears throat> That's what I wanted them for. Christmas tags, so um, I'm going to stick with this shape, maybe some round, maybe I'll do a round so I can show you that edge. So you're just going to take your wax paper, let me get some uh, gold here on this homemade palette which I'll probably use from now on because I'm getting too lazy to even clean a palette. And this means I can just have to throw things away. I hope things are okay upstairs. I heard a crash. And then, now I hear my husband. Maybe Jim is on his desk bugging him. The cat. Oh my, the cats and the dogs. It's like a circus around here lately. Um, he says it's like 
th having three toddlers and an old lady, and that's true. So here's the here's the trick. We're gonna take our paper and crumple it. And it, I can't believe how why well, I didn't think of this before, but. <laughs> The trick is applying your um, paint to the crumpled paper before you apply it to the image. And that way you can catch just the texture and then when you press it down, you get the effect of the wax paper. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> so here's my palette here. And I'm hoping you're going to see this this far away. So I'm just wiping it. And then wiping a whole bunch off so I can just skim along the surface with it. And usually I wipe dab this on a magazine, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm just going to skim over that top very flatly. Keeping my brush, my homemade brush perpendicular to the wax paper and just skimming over the top. I'm going to bring that up so you can see it close up. Hopefully it will show up. Let me get a piece of white paper. Oh, and then I had all my Christmas images. I didn't show you that. Okay, let me bring this up. So you can see that it's just showing up as dark. It's not shimmering at the moment. But that is gold on top of that paper. Wax paper. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to get this image, get some glue on there, and I went out shopping for glue again, and I have to order glue because no store had the kind I wanted to try. which is just Elmer's, I think it's Elmer's Extra Strength or something like that, not purple. I would use the purple, but it takes too long to dry. It's too gloopy. So I'm not using the purple glue today, but I'm definitely applying enough I think this is Elmer's repositionable. I'm going to apply that over there, and this is where you're going to need a brayer or a roller. Or a roller, not roller. Okay. And don't worry if things look a little cloudy. Some I thought were epic fails, and then when I came down the next day, I could see the image perfectly. Okay, so that's that. Let me show you that one I'm speaking of. 
this one I thought was a fail. Oh, there, that's glittering now. Maybe it works better lower. Anyway, I thought it was a fail, and then when I came down the next day, the image was perfectly clear. So, that's what I mean. It looks a little cloudy right now, and the image, is, image isn't appearing very much. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to try one of these ones. Let that dry a little bit. Another piece of wax paper here. And how you want your crackle finish to appear is up to you. Sometimes I twisted it. So it looked more like more bling. Sometimes I just rolled it in a ball so I could get a whole bunch of crinkles. Like so. And you could you could combine it, a smooth area with a crinkled area. You might try to leave your part of your image, which is the wax paper, and then just crinkle along the edges. You could try that. But you know, um, I didn't want to spend the money because I'll never use the paint, <laughs> but um, you know, if you're doing like a fairy journal, dragonflies, um, or if you just want the typical antique, this is absolutely beautiful. I could imagine so many possibilities with this. You could get that um, dragonfly paint. You could get that color shifting paint. And you could come up with all kinds of different things. Where'd my paper go? Let me bring this one up and show you. Which is probably not going to show up that much better. So really all I got was the what is sticking up and then I'm just going to try this one. See how that works. Try different glue with this. This is craft bond. And when I say they're not going anywhere, what I mean is things are adhering. I say that a lot. By the time I press these and die cut them, that wax paper pro will probably stay adhered forever. I still have my first batch which I test periodically. So I'm going to roll out that one. And I know it's not showing up very well. And it might not show up very well for a few hours here. So it looks a little milky. And then I'm going to show you real quick here. I have my cork. And sometimes I use my plastic bone folder. If you don't. If you don't want the white crackle to show up as much, 
you can just buff it out and it will be much less notice noticeable but all that takes um, working with different images and you'll soon find out that the white crackle only shows up on the dark spots doesn't appear at all on the lighter spots so that's why certain images work better than others so you can just take something like that your glue top go over it and kind of like give it a buff <laughs> and those white cracks will be much less noticeable so there's another one and that's probably definitely not showing up that much <laughs> okay <clears throat> so then I think I'll do this one with the flat and that way I can show you all of them what the difference is um, and you might like that better whoops sorry about that and then let me check the time 32 and um, I'll try to show you the aging too. Okay, so I just, I'm going to be using my finger for this one. I just went over it, brushed it very lightly. Oh, and by the way, I'm keeping the, the painted image, the painted surface up. Don't flip your wax paper and put your painted surface facing down because then it won't be as it won't be as brilliant because it will be underneath the wax paper and that will affect it. This isn't working very well. Let me try the let me try the brush. I just want a very very thin coat on top there. I'm trying not to miss any areas, but at the same time, it absolutely has to remain translucent. Otherwise, it's going to hide your image. And you don't want that because you want you want to see both. Maybe I should have applied a little bit of water to that, but unfortunately, yeah, that's probably going to not be a good idea because I, I have alcohol water. Okay, that's get one more little area here this isn't the most beautiful job <coughs> but it's going to look like brushed metal if you know what that looks like okay I'm cleaning my hand here so then I missed quite a few spots. And now I need a, a new um, a new drop of paint because I shouldn't have sprayed that with alcohol water. <laughs> Don't do that. Just keep your paint thin but as is. And 
that looks that corner looks like it's gonna come up even though it's been sitting there all night testament to that crappy glue oh that's probably good enough again my paint is up always my paint don't flip your wax paper and put your paint face down because that's also what's going to help you give you depth so there's that one and that looks like brushed metal okay <clears throat> So let me do, probably the aging is going to show up on there, and then maybe I'll do this one in bronze. So the aging, you can also do this alone too, but it's not going to have any metallic effects. And I'm out of antique linen distress ink, so I'm probably going to use vintage photo. I don't know if I would, I didn't try walnut stain yet, but I might try that. I could use broken twig. Maybe that's close enough. No, I put it away. Of course I did. Okay, so uh, let me get another palette here. And another brush. Get some more glorious gold. Or, no, you know what? I'm going to use the um, Extreme Glitter Gold on this and the Vintage Photo. And we'll see how that turns out. And I bet I'm going to have to wait an hour for this to show up. Okay, here we go with Vintage Photo. I'm just going to wipe it over. Like so. I'm trying not to press. I'm trying to just capture the cracks on top okay then the extreme glitter which actually this turned out to be one of my favorites oops and now it's mixing with the paint that's okay. I should have let that dry a little bit, but that's okay. I mean the ink is mixing with the paint. Turning the paint brown. And I'm just going to brush over. Top of that. I'll bring that up and show you. And I don't know if it's going to... So there you have both. You have the glittery gold and you have the, the um, vintage photo. So I'm going to let that dry a second. And then I'm going to do the bronze. 
on this one. See what happens. I don't know. It, it, it might. It might show up. We'll see. We'll see. Of course, I have to cut another big piece here. Then I'll show you how to do an edge, a quick edge, hopefully. Let's see. But I another for like if a fairy journal or whatever, you can buy all those different metallic colors like um, turquoise, teal, green, bright green, dragonfly effect, um, gossamer, angels. Angels would be a great subject. Yeah. Angels would be really pretty with this effect. Anything vintage. And then I also forgot, um, you know, those heart boxes, candy boxes for Valentine's. I always save those. Okay, so this is Antique Bronze Deco Art. I always save those boxes and then I decoupage on top. And if you do this on, thin paper, thin enough paper, you can, you can do something like that, projects like that. And both of those are way too much paint. So when I finished, I used my extra paint to paint my backs. <laughs> okay, rather than waste all that paint. Okay, so here we go with bronze. Whoops. And I didn't want that. I'm going to wipe that off. Did not want that. Too much paint there. So that's like how much paint I have on my homemade brush. So that I can just skim the surface. And not have globs of paint coming off. And like I said, I'm using, <clears throat> I'm working on white today so you can see it, but what I was using was a magazine. And then before I even touched this, I would dab it again, dab it off again. Okay. So there's the bronze. <clears throat> I do like the bronze. There's the bronze. Okay. So let that dry a minute. And then this one should be dry enough to roll over without picking up all that glitter on my roller. And we'll see what it does to this image, how much it ages it, and crackles it at the same time without disappearing completely, hopefully. Oh, and by the way, that poinsettia one was two Christmas cards. I cut it in half and put one, one part on the back and one part on the front 
So you can use old Christmas cards, you can use book pages, and things like that, and that is what is going to make this be able to go into Trash to Treasure as well. Make sure I have enough on there. Get that centered a little better. <laughs> Before I begin rolling, this one I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. Hopefully, those are dry enough that I can begin cutting here because I only have 10 minutes left before I run out of time on this card. I might have to cut cut those on off camera and then you'll just see them in the photo unfortunately because I might also have to let them dry a little longer so the images actually show up or I will use old older images in the photo I'll use some of those finished ones probably in one style like the fruit or something the fruit are the ones that actually you know I could have swore my grandma had a painting of fruit something to this effect that's why I say it looks very old and very antique Okay, there's the bronze. Okay, I'm going to go over here and begin die cutting these. I'll be right back. Here, give you something pretty to look at. This one I know will come out. Should have grabbed a piece of tape. Cutting that, cutting that pretty close there, that base. So I'm grabbing a piece of tape so my die doesn't slide. And some, some of my dies aren't very good at cutting through um, packaging. Usually you can get away with cutting through packaging in a digital, but those ones where I use scrapbook paper, I had an extremely difficult time cutting through packaging and scrapbook paper so you might want to keep that in mind some dies are just better than others okay that one worked My other flower oh, right beside me. And then another tip I might do, you know, if you want to do this quicker than this, um, individual images, make a master board, then slice it up to fit in your machine. And then you can mass make a lot faster than doing these one at a time. Although I will say in total it was only, I don't know, 
three or four hours for that entire two or three stacks. So once you get going, it's not nothing too difficult. Okay, there's another one. This one is gold. Okay, I'm having a hard time. I hope enough of this image, the fall image shows up. Just thought I would try it because of the colors. But maybe there's not enough contrast. So we'll see. Okay. Hopefully you cut through in one pass. This one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Two more to go. Um, I think I could get away with the larger die here on this one. Let's see. Oh, that reminds me. I'll show you how to make an ornament. And then this would be a great way to save your old Christmas cards. Have them be very glittery while they're on the tree. a larger one and I can tell I got a big spot of glitter there that I probably didn't want. Okay here's the bronze. I think I'll use a larger die on that one too if it'll fit. Okay, I'm sorry this video is going to be a long one. Oh, I hope to God I'm not sitting here for hours waiting for it to upload. Oh, and I really don't know if there will be a video on Thursday. I'm going to have to wait for that to dry to even remember which way it's supposed to go. Okay, there we go. 55. That's, oh my god, this is a very long video. But... see what we have, see if we can get anything to show up there. That's pretty. That's the aged and the glittery. It's beginning to show up. 
Now we need some drying time. Um, there's the flower with the gold. I know that one's going to show up. Here's the brushed, even though my brushing wasn't very good. Here's the brush defect. That one needs some time. There's just the uh, gold veining crackle. <laughs> Let me go down and see if it works better. I don't know. And then this one, I'm not sure if there's enough contrast or not. That's another gold one. But the veining is nice on that one. The crackle. That one came out nice. Okay. So, it's not going to work very well on this one. So let me get this one, which I didn't do. You can take this paint, this glitter paint, and just skim along the edge this extra paint whoops that's a little too globby and just skim it along the edge of there and it kind of looks like puffy paint and then you will have a nice automatic edge geez it's really hard to show things in this room okay so that would that's how I did that ornament let me get a couple here oh there's my first fruit that was the type of image that I thought I've seen something like this before in an old-fashioned painting that my grandmother had. That's why I chose the fruit. Okay, I'm about out of time. I'm at two minutes. Ornament. Just take a couple. Glue them back to back. You're going to need a crocodile to put the holes in that double, but as strong as wood. And that's how you could save your old Christmas cards. Okay, everyone. This is going to be the end of this. I'll see you next time. I don't know if there will be a video Thursday. My daughter's coming home. But thanks so much for your time. Thanks for watching. I'll get these all showing up nicely in a photograph. Thanks again. Bye.